Well, hello, everybody. Today, it gives me great pleasure to talk to you about calcium. This has been a point of interest since I was a fellow, because we all know that calcium seems to be what's plugging up the arteries. So I have an interest in calcium, and with it, vitamin K2. So what is vitamin K2? It's a vitamin that's unheard of. K1, maybe, but K2? So today, I'm going to teach you about calcium and vitamin K2 and why I'm so interested in it, because I think that this is a very important chapter in our understanding of what's causing blockages in the arteries of the body. So let's just dive right into it. So, you know, as a fellow, I noticed that heart disease, blockages in the arteries, seems to go along with diabetes, right? High blood pressure, uh, degenerative joint disease. These patients have arthritis. Um, many of them are very overweight, bad teeth, bad teeth, bad gums and dental decays seems to go along with coronary artery disease. And I always wondered, why is this the case? There's something going on with the bones, and they all have osteoporosis. So why do coronary patients go along with osteoporosis? They come to me because they get hip replacements, they get knee replacements, and I often wonder, what's that got to do with heart disease? Why is it that heart patients are getting joint disease, or vice versa, patients with bad bones and osteoporosis? they getting coronary artery disease. As I started doing the research, I started reading about calcium. And I started noticing that because of the bad bones and osteopenia, everyone was on calcium supplements. And then the studies started coming out that the calcium supplements that you take for your bones and, and for general health are actually increasing mortality. So there's numerous studies that show that if you take more than one gram of calcium, supplement on a daily basis increases cardiovascular risk by 20%. Now, if I had a drug that reduces your cardiovascular risk by 20%, I would, I would definitely give it to you. But here I have a calcium supplement that increases your risk by 20%. But nobody's talking about this. This really got my interest at why is it that calcium increases the risk? So we looked into it. The Women's Health Initiative study was a huge study. And it showed that one gram of calcium, elemental calcium supplementation, increased mortality between 15 and 22%. Increase your mortality, taking a calcium supplement. And this was with or without vitamin D supplementation. And we found that in renal failure patients, they were constantly given calcium supplements as well. Their risk increased by 22% just by taking calcium every day. And yet they were thought that they, they're taking calcium because they don't want to get bone disease, they want nice strong teeth, they want to have strong joints and hips, but no. So what is it about calcium supplementation? Well, one of the things we thought that it may increase clotting, because if you want a blood sample to clot, what do you do? You put some calcium in it, right? And it clots. Another thing that it can do is cause high blood pressure. So we know the higher the calcium levels, uh, it can cause high blood pressure. But these patients were not having high blood pressure, even though they were taking the calcium supplements. So we were not sure why calcium supplements do this. So now my recommendation to everyone is do not take calcium supplements unless there's a good reason to do so. Speak to your physician about it. But just don't take calcium because calcium supplements are available over the, over the counter. Um, so... There's something else that's got to do with calcium metabolism. And today I'm going to tell you that the answer is probably vitamin K2. So what is vitamin K2? Vitamin K2 is a fat-soluble, okay? It's a fat-soluble vitamin. That means you cannot absorb it into your body unless there's some fats available. And vitamin K2, assume for now that it's got something to do with good bone metabolism, okay? that you need vitamin, vitamin K2 for strong bones. So what's going to happen if you take vitamin K2 away from your body is you're going to get bone disease. Why would you get rid of vitamin K2? Why do we have vitamin K2 deficiency? Why would I even think anyone's got vitamin K2 deficiency? And I'm going to teach you today that you get vitamin K2 deficiency because of the lifestyle changes we've made. Because it's a fat soluble, and now we're on a low-fat diet. For the past 40 years, we've had this experiment, and I'm sure you've all looked at my YouTubes, that clearly shows you that this thing about the low-fat diet is not very good advice. Because with it came vitamin A, D, E, and K deficiencies. 
With these vitamins, you just need small amounts in your bloodstream to have a tremendous effect. And when we go on these odd diets, such as all these low fat diets, you're not gonna absorb those vitamins. And that's exactly what we've been finding. So let me tell you a little bit more about vitamin K and how, how this all fits in together. So in your bone, for example, you have two types of cells, the osteoclast and your osteoblasts. The osteoblasts, they build up bone. That means they take calcium from the bloodstream, push it into the bone. So you get nice, strong bones. Osteoclasts, they destroy the bone, okay? So they destroy the bone, they demineralize the bone. They take the calcium out. So the way it works is that you need osteocalcin to bind the calcium, but to activate the osteocalcin, you need vitamin K2. So if you do not have vitamin K2 in your body, you're not gonna get carboxylation of these chemicals called osteocalcin. And uh, this, in the tissues, the counterpart of that is called matrix GLA protein. So this protein has to be activated by two things, vitamin D and vitamin K2. Now in the tissues, this chemical does a different thing. It takes calcium, binds to it, and moves it into the bloodstream, out of the tissues. So in the bone, it causes deposition of calcium, but in the tissues, it pulls calcium out of the tissues, takes it into the bloodstream, so that it can then head on off to the bones. So these matrix GLA proteins, what are they doing in the tissues, and where are they being produced? They're produced by the smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels. So the blood vessels, they have smooth muscle cells. That's where they can vasodilate and vasoconstrict. They make this protein. This protein has to be activated by vitamin K2. When it's activated, it'll bind calcium and move it out of the blood vessel. When vitamin K2 is not there, there's nothing to take the calcium out of the blood vessel. When the vitamin K2 is not there for the bone, the bone will not be able to mineralize because that particular protein in the bone binds to hydroxyapatite and then the calcium gets trapped in the bone. So you would expect that vitamin K2 deficiency is gonna cause calcification in the tissues, the blood vessels, and causes demineralization of bones. So it causes osteopenia, and that's exactly what we've been seeing. You get more degenerative joint disease, more osteopenia, and more calcification where you shouldn't find calcification. Blood vessels should not be becoming ossified. So what's happening is that the total body calcium is actually pretty good, but it's all in the wrong places. And calcium supplementation doesn't help because calcium supplement, they just don't end up going to the bone. You need chemicals, you need hormones, you need enzymes and cofactors to put it in the bones. So vitamin K2 deficiency, this seems to be a very strong link. And there's two types of vitamin K, vitamin K1 and K2. So K1 has to do with coagulation. That's why we missed this for a long time, because we thought vitamin K is vitamin K. Actually, did you know that there's 10 types of vitamin K? There's one all the way to 10, but the important ones are vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. So K1 has to do with coagulation. And if you want to antagonize that, you take Coumadin, so it's a blood thinner. How does it work? It antagonizes vitamin K1. What about K2? Well, if you take Coumadin, you antagonize K2 also. So does that mean that when you're giving Coumadin, a blood thinner long-term to a patient, is that patient gonna have vitamin K2 deficiency also? Because you're antagonizing it? And the answer is yes. And I've known personally for 30 years that patients who are on Coumadin, they get calcification of the arteries. They get calcification of the aorta, they get calcification of the valve, they get calcification of the coronary artery. So we knew that years ago, but it took us 30 years to piece all this puzzle together. And now we know that Coumadin patients have a problem because they have not only low vitamin K1, which you want because they don't want their blood to clot, but you also have vitamin K2 deficiency. So where does K1 come from? K1 comes mostly from chloroplasts. So anything green, leafy vegetables, algae, 
that's where vitamin K1 comes from. So where does vitamin K2 come from? Now there are two sources of vitamin K2. One is animal sources, and the other one is my favorite fermented products. See, it's all coming together. Why, why, why I've been encouraging fermented products. So let's look at uh, vitamin K2, also known as uh, menaquinone. Animal one is called MK4, and the one that comes from, from the uh, fermented products is called MK7. MK7 is a longer molecule. It is biologically more active as well. It is found in some meats, some eggs, dairy, and fermented products. So vitamin K2, why would vitamin K2 deficiency happen if people are eating lots of meat, eggs, chicken, because the quality of the meat is also going down. If your animal was not eating green chloroplasts, green natural grass foods, that meat is not gonna have enough vitamin K2 also. The eggs, eggs are supposed to have a lot of vitamin K2, but today's eggs are all fed grains, and grains don't have vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 has to come from the original product, which means na nature. Nature has to provide it first. So when it goes through the cycles of the animals, that's when vitamin K2 levels go up. Fermented foods make vitamin K2. The fermentation products make vitamin K2. So vitamin K2 gets into the body. It activates all the uh, MGPs. And in the bones, you're going to get strong bones. And in the blood vessels, you're going to get inhibition of calcification. So now can we measure vitamin K2? If this is so good, then why can't I just go in and get a vitamin K2 level? Hmm? Why can't I just do it? Because there's no method to do it. So what we look is non-carboxylated proteins. And that's a test you can do, but it's not available right now. It's only being used in research purposes. And that's how we get all this information together. There was a huge study done, and I, you can see the references, I'll show them to you, that we correlated the non-carboxylated proteins, which tells you that you've got vitamin K2 deficiency, and correlated to the amount of calcification in the arteries. And there's a direct correlation. The more non-carboxylated MGLA proteins that they are, more the calcification in these arteries are. So this started really making us think that, my God, we do have a problem here. So then they did another study in, England, in uh, Europe. At, it was called the Rotterdam study. And in the Rotterdam study, they took patients, males and females, over the age of 55, thousands of them, and they looked at the vitamin K2 intake. And they listed the vitamin K2 intake that each patient had, and then looked at outcomes over the next eight years. And they found that aortic calcification, coronary artery disease, but also all-cause mortality were directly related to the vitamin K2 intake. More vitamin K2, lower the mortality, less coronary artery disease. Now, you may argue that, oh, well, maybe it's the food rather than the K2 itself. And that's a possibility. But at least we're beginning to see a correlation over here. In the studies found that if you consume more than 32 micrograms of vitamin K2 a day in your diet, there's a 50% reduction in cardiovascular death. Now you've got my attention as a cardiologist. And a 25% decrease in all-cause mortality. Why is all-cause mortality also important? That means it's not just decreasing heart attacks. It's also decreasing other things too, other causes of mortality, which may include some cancers. And there are studies showing that vitamin K2 supplementation reduces certain types of cancers. And I'll come to that if we get a chance here. If you like this video, then this one I strongly recommend it for you. But if you want to see the whole series, please click here.